you get that back? Oh, this is working fine. Did you get that one? I, okay. Oh, let them sit down. I don't want to do that. Betty's here, so we'll have to start. Good evening. Appreciate y'all coming out this evening. We'll get started with prayer requests, praise. Be looking forward to Friday with you. <laughs> okay. You want it, Johnny? second time. Funny. Okay. Okay. I talked to uh, Eddie the other day and he he said they Basically, told him to take how long to go home and rest and see if it wouldn't heal up whatever the problem is with his leg. You know? I talked to Will Maddox. Uh, Will said, he says he's, a, I never talked to him when he said he wasn't feeling good. But he said he's done pretty good. And he just gets out and goes to the store and goes back home. So keep them in your prayers also. We got a lot of others that's, that's still sickness. Eric? Okay. Anyone else? Always a good thing. We went through that a while back. Uh, our daughter, we thought she had thyroid cancer. We actually thought it was pretty far advanced at the time, but she didn't. Uh, went back for some other tests, I think, or something other. And when they went in to check it, they couldn't find any cancer cells whatsoever. So a lot of people were praying for it at that time. And prayer does help. Tony? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. 
Let's continue to remember our nation, uh, remember our armed forces. Take your Bibles and turn tonight to Psalm chapter 133. Psalm 133. I want to show an example to you tonight, and I need to have a couple of folks. I need Kyle to come up and Johnny to come up, and <clears throat> I'm, I've got to figure out which one of these young people to use. You feel like doing it? Callan, you feel like doing it? All right, so come here. So here's what we're going to do. Obviously, you know that there's two ways in and out of the church, correct? You've got this way here, and you've got this way here. And there may be other ways, but those are the prominent Well, you got a door here, and you got a door there. Now, Kyle, I need you to stand on this side, and I need you to take his right hand and hold on to it. All right? And I need you to take his left hand and hold on to it. And here's what we're going to do, all right? We're going to leave the church building, and Kyle's going to go out this door. Johnny's going to go out that door. All right, so let's go. What's wrong? Why are y'all not leaving? The church may be on fire. Why aren't you leaving? Uh, huh? What, what's go okay, now that's enough. Did you, did you like that? Was that all right? All right, go ahead and have a seat. You know what happens in a church when you have one going one way and another member going another you see something very similar to that. It becomes a very frustrating 
uh, example, unfortunately, of, of just chaos and disorganization. In a couple of weeks, our church is going to be participating uh, in an association-wide revival event. And what that means is that we, along with three other or two other churches, we're having revival services from Sunday night to Wednesday night. And then on Thursday night, we're all going to meet at South Harriman Baptist Church and bring everything together. The theme of this particular revival is standing together. And the idea is about being in unity, to, to stand as a whole, to stand in support of one another, and to encourage each other, to lift each other up in prayer. And, and our goal is to remember that every church in our association is not an enemy church, but rather a sister church. Too many times we look at churches in the form of competition, but in reality, we need to be looking at it as family. And so tonight, we're going to read a passage of scripture uh, that, that we're going to start uh, looking at this idea of standing in unity, standing together, working together, praying for each other, and praying for support. Now, the example I used here, if the building were to have been on fire, and if Johnny was trying his best to get to this door, and Kyle was trying his best to get to that door, and poor old Callan here, if, as long as he didn't split in half, what do you think would have happened as a result of their pulling in separate directions? Would they have made it out of the building? All right. So somebody would have had to give. Somebody would have had to give. They both may have thought their way was the best way. They both may have thought, man, if we don't go out this door, man, it's, it, we're, we're going to get uh, caught up in the fire. And Johnny may have thought, if we don't go out this door, then, then we're going to be trapped. And so both guys had this idea that this is the way I need to go, this is the way I need to go. But the only way they were ever going to go out the door, still holding on to Callan, was if somebody literally gave in. The word that a lot of people would use would be the word cave. Somebody would have had to have caved. The problem is we grow up in a society today that says caving means you're weak. We grow up in a society today that says you're supposed to stand for what you believe and you need to be firm in that stance and you shouldn't cave and you shouldn't waver and you shouldn't do these things, but you ought to be just strong and determined in what you believe to be right. And while, while certainly there is a time and a place for that, it's not in the work of the Lord that Christian people work against each other, but rather God is a God that tells us that we are to work together. And in fact, he elevates this idea of working together to a point that he literally says that for us to do otherwise is really to make a mockery of ministry. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, if we choose to go our separate ways in our mentality, that is not God's way because God says that's not how I intend for the church to work. I intend for the church to work together. And so we're going to see that tonight. And Psalms 133, it's a very short, in fact, it's one of the, the four shortest chapters in, in the book of Psalms. Uh, and this one happens to be one of three that just has three verses. But if you'll look with me at Psalm 133, it says this, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord, God, uh, the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. When we talk about unity, we need to have an idea of what that means within the church. What do you, when you envision the word unity within a church, what, what comes to mind? What's something that just immediately pops into your head right now? Someone want to share? On the same page, okay. Cooperation, okay. Standing as one. Okay. Someone else? Togetherness. Someone else? 
I'll throw one out that you don't think of and you shouldn't think of, and that is I. If you're talking about togetherness, you're usually not starting out with the word I. Because I is secondary to the idea of working together. I is secondary to everything else. In fact, I, I, I don't look at I. I'm not important, right? It's we. We are important. It's we. We work together. It's we. We accomplish things. And I would challenge that most of the time when you find where you see this division in work and this division in focus, it's when we start putting I in front of we. And it's more about my idea than about your idea. And no one knows God's will as well as I know God's will, right? I, I, will, I, I will tell you this. I have found many times that when I choose to humble myself, I becomes diminished and we becomes enlarged, right? I get diminished. I'm no longer the center of attention. We are the center of attention. And so as we think about church, as we think about worship, obviously I am here to worship. I am here to get something out of the service. But my participation should say more along the lines of we need to worship. We need to praise. We need to pray. We need to join together. We need to do the work together. And sometimes we miss that. We were so focused on us that we missed that. Uh, can anyone give me some reasons why we get focused on ourselves and self-centered as opposed to looking at the group as a whole? What, what's some of our stumbling blocks? How, how, how do we get caught up in self-centeredness? Pride. Okay, pride. I, and can I add to pride... Arrogance. Remember what I just said. Sometimes we are so arrogant that God has told me and nobody else in the church what needs to happen. And so it's got to be my way because I'm the only one that knows what God wants us to do, right? Uh, and, and I know it, it's not meant to come across that way. I know that's not what is meant to happen. But when you're convinced, then you're not able to be persuaded or changed, right? So let's say me and Kyle, we meet up here and we look around and we say, you know what, we need some brightness in this church. And so Kyle says, buddy, I've got it. I think we ought to paint the room yellow. I mean canary yellow. And I look at him and I said, Kyle, there's no way we're going to paint this church canary yellow. Canary yellow is not going to work. It, it won't brighten the room up. And, and everybody knows that, that, that canary yellow, it, it would be blinding to have canary yellow. So Kyle, what I think we really ought to do is literally go to a violet or a bright violet or something like that. And Kyle goes, you're crazy. That's a girl color. We ain't going to do no girl color, right? And so we get into this debate. Well, Kyle, I, God laid it on my heart. You ever heard that before? God laid it on my heart that it be purple or violet. And then Kyle says, whoa, 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 wait, wait. God laid it on my heart that it be yellow. Now, if we both pause right then and there and say, you know what? We need to pray and ask God, God, what do you think about this? What do you think God's going to tell Kyle and Tim at that moment? Don't pick up a paintbrush and don't paint it either color. That's what God's going to tell us to do. Because obviously, Kyle and I are becoming uh, enraged over this color. That is not what God wants for the church. Because here's what God would say to that. I don't care if it's brown, yellow, green, purple, blue, whatever. I don't care. I want to see it filled. I don't care about the color. I just want to see it filled. And immediately, God's going to tell me and Kyle, quit worrying about the color. And start worrying about the people that you need to contact to fill the pews of this church. If we talk about uh, books, if we talk about uh, how we 
arrange things in the church, if we talk about the music that we sing, if we talk, all these things are there as a means in which to give God our worship and our praise. But if it ever becomes dissension in the church, it's no longer something that is pleasing to God. And God is not pleased with our actions if it's causing dissension, correct? Would you all agree with that? Let, let's, let's start there first. Would you all agree that dissension in the church is displeasing to God? Okay, so if there's dissension, what should me and Johnny do about it? If there's dissension between me and Johnny, what should me and Johnny do about it? Go straight to him. Johnny, I got a problem. Or Johnny comes to me, Tim, I've got a problem, right? That's the first thing. But how do we go to each other? You know, sometimes we say, go to each other and tell them you're mad <clears throat> or that you're offended or whatever. But is that all that that passage says? In love. Here's what's interesting about relationships. The Bible says I'm first to start with going to Johnny. And so me and Johnny, we go. The second one is to take a witness. All right? That's what it says. Take a witness. What greater witness is there than Jesus? Johnny, let's pray. Johnny, let's ask God what we need to do about this. Johnny, let's see where Jesus is at work in the church and how we might have missed it and how we're out of touch. Because I have to start with the assumption that Johnny's not doing it to be ugly or to be mean or to be violent or to be any of those things. I have to start with and assume that Johnny is really starting from a place believing that in his heart this is what's right. And so if I believe that Johnny is really wanting to do what's right, then the next step is, okay, Johnny, I believe that. Now, I want, to, I want us to pray about it, and together we ought to be able to ask God and let God reveal to us what we need to do to fix this. But how do we handle differences today? Johnny, what do we normally do if we have odds with somebody? You just take it and go home. That's one. All right. What's another one? You don't come out of love. You just spew and have a fight, basically. What's what's the, what's another one? I'll tell you, this is the hardest one to deal with because you think you're doing God's will. Kyle, you're not going to believe what Johnny did to me. Kyle, I, I don't understand why Johnny. We need to pray for Brother Johnny. But what I really did was I chose teams. I didn't ask Kyle to really pray. What I started with was, you're not going to believe what Johnny did to me. And I caused him to pick a team. That doesn't sound like trying to make amends between me and Johnny at all. That sounds like I'm trying to set up an adversarial army to go against Johnny's adversarial army. I'm making the divide greater, not smaller. And, and we do it in this, uh, in this thought process, I'm wanting to pray for Johnny because Johnny has to be wrong because he's disagreeing with me and I'm always right. right? I mean, that's, that's the mentality. That's what we use, right? When we finally get to a point where we sit there and we say, God... I want to cave, not because I want to be weak, but God, I want to cave because I want Johnny to see that I love him. And I'm not really interested in winning an argument. I'm interested in us reestablishing a fellowship. That's when God can come in, not only mend the relationship, but allow us to then go out and minister as God would have us to minister. Now, I almost had you do this. I almost uh, I brought a rope tonight and let you and Kyle do a tug of war, but I was afraid y'all would get so competitive you'd tear something up, so we didn't do that. But, but that's pulling each other apart. Have you ever been pushed? You see, I could have just as easily have gotten Callan up here, and I could have gotten Kyle up here, and I could have said, Callan, I want you to try and push Kyle to the back. And Kyle, I want you to stand still and not be pushed. 
Which one's the smaller one of the group? Here's, 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 the, here's the twist to it, though. What if what Callan is trying to do is right and we're just dead set against it and we just bow up and say no? We have that going on sometimes in our churches, and, and that's unfortunate because then no progress gets done. Callan's trying, but he gets no progress done. And Kyle is standing firm, but all he's doing is fighting what Callan's trying to do. He's not doing anything either. And so nothing gets done. You say, Tim, I, I, I get all this. I, I understand about unity. I'm all about it. Let's, let's go 100% with unity. Let's stand together. Let's be strong in it. Let's do all these things. And, and as I share that with you, I'm going to let you know the biggest obstacle to the church living and, and working and worshiping in unity. It is not that you don't want to be unified. That's not the problem. If I went around tonight and I was to ask each one of you, do you think we ought to be unified as a church? I bet to the person as I ask that, everybody in this room would say, absolutely, we ought to be unified. And if I asked you, are you committed to being unified? Every person in this room would be, oh, yes. I'm committed. I'm going to do that. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be conscious of it. I'm going to, I'm going to be right there, and, and then we would pray about it. We'd be excited about it. We'd dismiss. We'd go out the door, and then what do you think? The very first thing, probably wouldn't even make it home without somebody in this group having something happen. What do you think it would be? Yeah. Does a preacher think that really we don't want to be unified? Now, that'd be the first thing that'd be said, right? Does preacher really think that we don't want to be unified? Where did that thought come from? Who put that thought in your mind? What do you think, John? Who put that thought in your mind? The master of deceit says, you need to start doubting what he's saying, not because he's right or wrong, but just because how dare he assume that you're not going to be in unity this week. Well, you know you will be, but immediately you're not. Because what did we all agree before you left here? I'm going to be in unity. We're going to all work together. We're all going to do it. And then before you even get home, the first thing that goes through your mind is, I can't believe that the preacher would think that I don't want to be in unity. I'm offended. That's not the mind of Christ. Now, that's not you leaving here wanting that thought in your mind. That's not you leaving here being offended. That's on the way home that you become offended. Why is that? Because there's a devil that wants nothing more than to say, you know what, Miss Betty? I don't want you to be in unity with your church. I don't want you to be in unity with God's people. I don't want you to be in unity with the work that's being done there. I want you to be offended at something. And so the devil will try his best to create something that would spark up and become offensive to you. And so it could be that. It could be something else. It could be that Johnny picks up the phone and says, man, that's a good service. And then all of a sudden hear Mandy in the background, yeah, but that preacher sure was long. <laughs> yeah. Mandy probably says that. That really probably happens, doesn't it, Johnny? I'm just, you see where I'm going with that? You see how easy it is to get sidetracked just because the devil puts thoughts out there. He puts an environment out there that makes the Christian look at themselves. When I read this passage of scripture in the book of Psalms, the first thing that came to mind was this. Moses took the oil, broke it over the head of Aaron, the oil then dripped down across his head, down across his beard, and literally down his robe. All of this done at a time when God has anointed Aaron to be the priest of, of, of the children of Israel. And yet when you look at Scripture, how many times do you see that Aaron, and if not Aaron, then certainly the children of Israel choose not to follow the will of God. What a great and exciting time, right? 
great and exciting time. God says, I'm anointing you. But let me remind you, Aaron is also the guy that sat there and helped build the idol, the golden calf, that they started worshiping while Moses was up on the mountain getting the very Ten Commandments that said, don't have any golden graven images of anything about anybody or anyone or anything. I am the only God. And while he's getting that command and while he's getting those commandments to bring back down, here is Aaron doing exactly the opposite. Does that sound like unity? What do you think? Does it sound like unity when Moses is going one way and Aaron's going the other? But when they are together, and when they're working together, and when they're of like mind with Christ, the Bible says how sweet and how uh, pleasant it is. Literally, it goes back to the moment when God ordains Aaron through the, through the, uh, through the uh, anointing of oil by Moses. How, how sweet and how pre precious it is that moment. And so I'm going to sit there and I'm going to challenge you to do this tonight. As we get ready to dismiss, I want you to think just tonight, is there anybody that I might be at odds with tonight, or if there isn't anybody that you're at odds with, is there anybody that you sort of are not working with, if you want to use that, the word, that you're not in unity with? That your spirit and their spirit, it's just not there. Is there anybody in your life that you've got like that? It may be somebody in this church. It may be somebody in your family. It may be somebody that you work with or go to school with. It could be any number of different places and any number of different individuals. But what God seeks from us is to be a people of unity. I'm going to challenge you to do something tonight, and I'm going to challenge you to ask God as we get ready to close out with prayer, God, would you reveal the people that I need to reach out to just to say I love you? I'm not asking you to go much further than that. God may lead you to go further than that. But the idea is, is there anybody that I just need to say, you know what, I love you. They just need to hear you say, I love you. I love you. I lo uh, Jesus has told me uh, to love you, and, and I just feel led to call you because I just want you to know I love you. I'm going to challenge you. Ask God to reveal those people to you, and then follow up by doing what God's led you to do. And that is to call those folks and tell them, I love you. I'm going to ask you to stand as we dismiss with prayer tonight. And I'm so glad that you all were here. So glad that you all are in attendance. I, I can't wait for how this revival uh, is going to uh, turn out and how it's going to be. By the way, let me, I will try and explain some things real quick. But I, I'm going to try and do a much better job Sunday. I'm going to have some papers to hand out or pamphlets to hand out so it'll make a little more sense. But it, it's basically a, a a five-day revival, if you would. Uh, it starts out here at Child's Memorial with Brother Charles from um, Climbersville preaching. On Monday, and by the way, all services start at 7. Uh, that's on Sunday night. On Monday night, we'll be at Piney in Oakdale, and that church service starts at 7, and uh, Brother Charles will be preaching that service. Then on Tuesday, we'll be at Climbersville, and on Wednesday we'll be at Climbersville, and that will be myself, and there will be a, a person from Piney that will be also sharing that uh, one of those two nights. We'll, we'll figure that out as we go along. And then on Thursday night, we'll wrap things up uh, over at South Harriman Baptist Church. So, uh, And the preacher that night will be someone from the Tennessee Baptist Convention, and I would just challenge everybody to be much in prayer for this. I, I'm I'm excited that we as a association are doing something like this where it's not just us, but it's us with others standing together. And so we'll, we'll pray to that end. But Brother Tony, would you mind dismissing us this evening?